Hi, Sue Miller. My name is Pamela Bumel, and my organization is Feral Cat Assistance and Trapping. And I help with a process called TNR, which is Trap, Neuter, and Return. First of all, I'd like to thank you two for even caring to get the feral cats. <clears throat> Spade and neuter. An alternative instead of taking them to the local shelter where they would just be euthanized. Um, so basically how the process works is, you know, volunteers or people as you guys are developing in the park will most likely run into more feral cats. And basically removing them causes a vacuum effect. As you stated earlier, there's an apartment complex, as I'm sure there might be several other apartment complexes that line this particular trail. Well, cats get lost, they're generally unaltered, and even though the cat is friendly, when they breed kittens and the kittens <coughs> haven't been socialized, they grow up feral. And the difference between feral and wild is the, the feral is untamed, you know, no socialization from humans. Cats are not what I would deem true wild animals. While they may present wild, but you know, a raccoon, a possum, those are deemed true wild animals. So, you know, a lot of people get that confused or know what a wild cat is going to attack. And let me make it very clear in my 15 years of doing this, I've never had a feral cat outside just come out straight up and attack me. This is different when they're in my house and I have them in carriers, you know, they get a little, you know, stressed and grumpy, of course, and I get that. And Aaron of Dog Days is pivotal, pivotal in the process of doing this. These people trap the cats, they brought them to Aaron, Aaron brought them to me in Berrien, where I take them to, to Linwood to the Feral Cat Spay and Neuter Project. They are the ones who do the spay and neutering of feral cats for free. So then they come back from the spaying and neutering, they come back to my house, where I hold them for two days, and then they go back to where they were trapped at, and then they are maintained by whomever the caretaker may be. And so the next process is basically the caretakers keeping an eye on their sites as you stated, mom just showed back up, which generally happens. So now the next process is making sure we get that female, because inevitably in about four months she'll be neat, She'll have more babies and the process starts all over again. And they all have ear tips, right for female, left for male. And that is distinguished that the cat has been altered. Imagine having 15 black cats in one colony and you have to kind of continually go back, oh, there's a new black cat. And if you look at the ear, then you know that one's been spayed or neutered. Because you will, of course, possibly retract the kittens. It will happen. Oh, it's got the ear tip, you release it. So it's very simple to distinguish that. And again, apartment complexes, you know, friendlies get lost, you know, um, and then if a friendly gets lost, it depends on what the next process is. You can have it checked for a chip. If it has one, then hopefully you can find its rightful owner. They're real friendly, and some of the organizations are, you know, have room for them. And then hopefully we can put them in to a rescue organization. But as you know, lack of money, the shelters are all pretty full. So that's always, you know, very difficult. Um, I've been doing this for about 15 years. I average about 1,000 cats a year. This does not include the kittens. The kittens I average between two to 300 a year. And any kittens that I come from feral cat colonies, if they're young enough and can be socialized, they are then spayed and neutered and then adopted out into good homes. And Erin does the exact same process, but she stays more local. I'm pretty much all over that. I've been to Silk Lake last week. Um, I've been to um, Grace Harbor. You know, if the need is there, then and if it's a, something I can do, particularly with the volume aspect, I can do that. So um, it is all volunteer. I have an actual real job on top of all this. This is all volunteer. Um, I'm a registered charity. I'm not a 5013C. Because, you know, and you guys are 501 c correct? No, no, we're not. You're not? Um, okay. We, well, we, we're part of the uh, Foothills Rails and Trails Coalition. Okay. Which is... The 501 c Right. Mm -hmm. okay. We're connected with okay. that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to become one is quite an arduous. Yeah, we're not big enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, we're all me and mm -hmm. a, few, a handful, a few volunteers. So, um, the, the process, like I said, is very simple. It's just a matter of the volunteers seeing the problem, knowing what to do with that problem, mm -hmm. 
And a lot of people don't know about TNR. They really don't. And you know, your clients or customers of you know Erin and she's like, oh yeah, I can I can help you with that. And it was a fairly easy process. I mean, it wasn't tremendously difficult. And then the maintaining of the colonies, as you guys were asking about what type of shelters you can put out there for them, there's numerous things on the website, but get a Rubbermaid container, cut some poles out of them, put some straw hay, and tuck them back in the bushes. The one thing I would caution you guys, if you want to get a dog park, don't put it on the feral cats. Um, dogs, I'm sure you got your hunting dogs around here, and you just got your typical dogs who want to chase something. And you don't want them to get the whiff of that, especially if it's close by. Um, you want to keep it as hidden as possible, because we all know there are not really nice people out there. And we'll sometimes deliberately go and do bad things, wait with the dog, or just destroy the, 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 the housing that has been built. can't tell you how many times that's happened in my own feral cat colonies, is people will literally take the shelter away from them, destroy the shelter, you know, and that kind of thing. So, you know, that's always an, that's always an issue. So just keep it very well hidden, and then you know, hopefully they'll just be maintained there and not do that very safely. But the the uh, rubber make container that you get, did you want it to be big enough for all of the stuff? Yes, so you're probably looking at the ones that are about this big, not some of the little ones, but the ones that are pretty big. Mm -hmm. They stand about yay high. Um, I would suggest gluing the lid on, you know, um, so that way, you know, um, however it handles, get one that has the clip-on handles, not that it just sticks on, the, the clip-on handles, so that way if it gets knocked over or however you set it, the lid doesn't fall off. And again, another reason why to glue it. And then cut two holes out, and like I said, and don't put the holes, you know, you have the bottom of the carrot, of, let's say the rubber made. You want to stick it up a couple of inches because you don't want the water flow, not so much flowing in there, but you don't want it so much lower to the ground and the cats can just step up into it. And then regularly checking to see if it's wet, because you know it's snow, the rain, etc. And don't use blankets or fleece or towels. They do not absorb, they don't hold heat well, like wool does, for instance. Wool is excellent. Go to the good wool store. store. Fleece, no, uh -uh. fleece. Sometimes it's a repellent, you know, it kind of beads, but then when it soaks, it's cold. Fleece is cold. And so, you know, the cat sleeping on a cold blanket just really isn't, you know, very comfortable. So I always recommend wool and straw. I can't remember why they said hay was not a good thing, but they said straw was a much better thing to use along with cedar that is not processed with any chemicals or anything like that. Just plain cedar chips. Just you know that are not treated with anything. Mm -hmm. Now, go ahead. Let me ask you a question. We got this mama cat done. We're, we're hopefully capturing the thing before it gets to the heat. Now the cats get the heat at any particular time of the year, or is just <coughs> when they were born. Or in Western Washington, obviously in warmer states, they're in heat 24/7. But in Western Washington, right now, cats are out of heat. Whereas last winter, you know, we had a really warm winter last year. Cats were in heat in January. So the colder the winter or fall, the less likely that they will go into heat. Now, we're not talking household pets. Actually, household females can go into heat pretty much any time because it's warm. So, and a male can sense that right away, especially if that cat is allowed outside. But when it comes to outdoor feral cats, they do not go into heat until it starts warming up, which is obviously mid-spring, or in the first of spring when it gets really, really warm. So, yes. And then it stays, as soon as there's a really good cold snap, like right now, thank God, um, you know, as much as I hate the snow as anybody, uh, you know, I was thankful there was a cold snap, so they stopped the heat. So I actually have newborn kittens already. You know, they're like three weeks old. So, yeah, uh, it can go pretty long. You know, but luckily, like I said, we have a really good culture. So capture this moment. Yes, and that's very difficult at times when you already have altered cats in the colony. You will inevitably retrap something. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, if you trap something you're unfamiliar with, keep it. Don't release it. 
Oh, if it's not one of the three cats. Yeah, the kittens. It would be the male. Yeah. I've heard it said that feral cats don't live very long. Is there any food? I totally disagree with that. I I had a colony I trapped over six years ago with 35 plus cats. I have now seen still three remaining. Now I'm not going to deny it. And I found one deceased in in the sh uh, shelter I had made up for them. Natural fruition will take its place. And where these particular cats are at, it is gated, it is locked. No one else is dumping cats. You will find people dumping cats. Well, we found one on the trail. Remember that one? That was just uh, it was it was dead and it had been yeah, dead for a little while. Thing, yeah. And so you went yeah. and buried it. You're in an apartment yeah. complex and you have those people walking those trails and like, oh god, I got this cat, I don't want anymore. Boop! Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Chances are it'll be probably a pregnant female who's friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, and then again, you know. If it wasn't for the humans, then we wouldn't have feral pets, right? So it's a process that is very long, and it has to be maintained. Otherwise, you'll have 20, 30 cats in short of two years. Yes, on the back of my flyer, it actually breaks down the numbers of how many cats can be born to just two cats. I remember once traveling in Greece, in the city of Athens, God me. I don't know, cats came from everywhere. They must have a hundred cats. They have, you know, all these cats. People would be fed. And in some places, they'll throw the cat out. This is not. In all these places, in Italy. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, unfortunately, they do horrible things over there to those cats when that process gets so big. Mm -hmm. So.